allocate, automate, or maybe disassociate. If there's no path, if there's attitudinal disconnects, and there's no concept for advocacy, well, maybe you're doing that group a disservice by keeping them. Hey, this is Duncan McPherson with Pareto Systems. I'm at the legendary Pelican Hill Golf Resort in Southern California. We've got a number of clients in this part of the world, so it's always a treat to pay them a visit. And don't get me wrong, I love Four Seasons, but I never get tired of palm trees and sunshine. But I thought I'd share this with you before I head out because I had an interaction with a very significant fee-for-service professional who has the unintended consequence of being referable. And by that I mean occasionally he gets introduced to a friend or family member of a client who's not a good fit or a client of a strategic partner for that matter. And how does he bow out gracefully without it coming off as a sort of a, it's not me, it's you type of dynamic. So of course, what's important when you meet a prospective client uh, of any kind, you set an expectation up front that this is not a sales encounter. You have a fit process. You don't try to be all things to all people. This is you being a sounding board as a value added service to the rainmaker who made the introduction. And there's no expectation it needs to go any further than that. Now, of course, if the friend presses you to become a client and you just feel it's not a good fit, you have to simply say, hey, I made a decision a long time ago not to try to be all things to all people, but rather all things to some people. You know, and as part of your agenda, you're conveying that there's no hidden agenda. And again, your goal isn't to see how big you can get, it's how small you can stay. And you just don't feel there's a good fit based on AAA. There's not an alignment of interest. Their assets now and in the future don't align with your expertise and process. And maybe there are other issues around attitudinal compatibility and the whole concept of advocacy. And you just respectfully um, convey that, you know, that's how you feel. Now, of course, you need to go back to the rainmaker. <clears throat> and respectfully ensure that no bridge is burned, you still want to convey that you're growing, but you're doing it methodically with scarcity. So <clears throat> you want to pay tribute to the activity. You want to thank the Rainmaker for making the introduction and how much you enjoyed the interaction with the friend and let them know that the friend did in fact press you to become a client, but you made the decision that you felt it was not a good fit and that you offered to introduce them to somebody where you thought there was a better alignment of interest. And this gives you an opportunity to effectively reboot. Like it's like a control alt delete with an existing long-term client where you're activating some belonging. You know, they, they feel like they belong to something. You're conveying that you're growing, but your goal is not to see how big you can get. It's how small you can stay again very important that that is articulated. Now, what's interesting is when you take on this approach, you come to the realization also that you may have some existing clients that are not a good fit. You're allowed to evolve. It's part of your progression as a professional. I mean, in the beginning, you'd work with anybody and you get to a point of potentially diminishing returns because now you're too big and it's actually diluting the client experience and you get into that component of who needs you versus who really deserves you now and in the future. So many of our clients, they're starting to adopt uh, an approach where they're either going to allocate, automate, or disassociate from customers who are not a good fit. Again, customers, they don't empower you fully. They're a B, C, or D client. They're maybe not connected to one of your AAA clients. And maybe their service is coming at the expense of your A, AA, AAA, right? Your clients and advocates. So you basically reframe them and you say, you know, as I evolve my business, uh, I think you would be better served if I 
allocate you to this protege who has our practice and our process, but I feel that's a better fit. Or maybe what you're going to do is you're going to automate part of the relationship and shift from this mindset of households, households and holdings to models and platforms and use AI. And basically you're getting out of the wealth management business so you can focus on the relationship management part of the business with the clients that are a good fit. So again, allocate, automate, or maybe disassociate. If there's no path, if there's attitudinal disconnects and there's no concept for advocacy, well, maybe you're doing that group a disservice by keeping them. I mean, if they're not gonna take your advice fully and completely, maybe you need to introduce them to somebody whose advice they will take. Not everybody's a good fit. Be transparent, be forthright, be respectful, take the high road, but don't let somebody's own happiness come at your own expense or at the expense of the clients you're trying to competitor proof or replicate. Okay. So thanks for watching. I'm going to head out, but uh, until next time, this is Duncan McPherson with Pareto systems. Make it a great day. Bye for now. <laughs>